Uh, uh, stay in your seats. This is new. Uh, they're early. They're giving us a real show today. That they are. They're giving us a real show today. They're ready, we're ready. G'day everyone and welcome back to Home Drive-In and welcome to another episode of Take 10 as we look back on a year that gave us horror fans an absolute assortment of treats to choose from. Reviewing horror films released over the last few years has been, I'm happy to say, a very positive experience. However, as far as our beloved genre is concerned, the year 2022 absolutely killed it. Pun intended. This list compiles some of the standout releases in what I do declare was an excellent year for horror cinema. So with that, I give you 10 standout horror movies of 2022. This video will be fairly spoiler free, but if like me and if you haven't seen all of these films and you want to go in completely blind, proceed with caution. Chapters are provided, so feel free to skip the ones you haven't seen, so on and so forth. But with that, Let's tiptoe back in time a couple of years, and let's get started. Just a little reminder everybody, if you do enjoy these videos, please give that like button a gentle nudge, leave me a comment to read, and yes, I do read them all, or even consider hitting that subscribe button. A little love from you guys will help me get my channel out there, meaning that I can keep doing what I love and bring you more awesome stuff. Again, thank you so much for being here, but for now, let the show begin. Number 10, Terrifier 2. While by no means crowd pleasers, the Terrifier films are an absolute must for gorehounds, and this second entry provides another unapologetically bloody adventure for Art the Clown. And this time he's seemingly not working alone. Set one year after the original, this film follows Sienna, a teen girl preparing an elaborate costume for Halloween who fights to protect herself and her younger brother when they become the sadistic clown's next targets. While the original Terrifier was criticised for its apparent lack of plot and characterization, this sequel compensates by delivering a far more engaging story and a truly compelling protagonist. Clocking in at 2 hours 19, nearly 45 minutes longer than the original, the length may dissuade some horror fans, yet the runtime is filled with some visceral gore sequences and moments of genuine tension. Lauren Levera gives a truly memorable performance as the angel costume Sienna, who I do predict will become as much an icon as her on-screen nemesis. Writer-director Damien Leone, who also created the epic gore effects, more than outdoes his original film with this sequel, and with Terrifier 3 on its way, gore fans will have much more bloody carnage to dive into. Laura? Number 9. Smile. The premise for Smile may have had a few eyes rolling, appearing vaguely similar to the likes of It Follows and The Ring, yet the film still delivers a unique horror experience. When a therapist witnesses the horrific suicide of a patient, she starts experiencing some chilling hallucinations, including random people with a hideously unnerving grin that appears to be the work of something supernatural. Smile is in essence a film about trauma, with our protagonist Rose, also haunted by a horrific childhood experience, now struggling to maintain her sanity as this entity invades her everyday life. Are you alone in the house, ma'am? Yes. Are you sure? What? Actress Sosie Bacon carries the film with her convincing portrayal of a desperate woman burdened with the isolation of her situation, as she struggles to explain her experiences to those around her. Based on his short film Laura Hasn't Slept, director Parker Finn interweaves an intriguing detective story with some relevant themes of mental illness. While the titular smile may be interpreted as the mask some people wear to hide their condition. Also with a sequel just around the corner, it may be time to check out this film with its sympathetic protagonist, anxiety-inducing tension, and enough scares to make any horror fan smile. Holly. <laughs> Sweetheart, what is your name? My name is Esther. Number 8. Orphan First Kill. 
The amount of original horror content in 2022 was accompanied by its fair share of follow-ups, and this surprise prequel didn't quite top its predecessor, but still delivers a campy good time. Leading up to her rampage in 2009's Orphan, this prequel explores Esther's escape from an Estonian mental institution where she arrives in the US to pass herself off as the missing daughter of a wealthy family. Isabel Furman once again plays the titular orphan who, now 24, required the assistance of body doubles, forced perspective and clever camera trickery to replicate her 11-year-old self from the first film 13 years ago. On repeated viewings, these tricks do tend to become a little more apparent, yet Furman still delivers a convincing performance that will soon have you forgetting any visible flaws. And while the original Orphan was renowned for its shocking twist, viewers will still be in for a surprise in this film which makes a truly eye-opening revelation of its own. Despite its implausibility, Orphan First Kill is a prequel that stands tall. And I use that term loosely and at nearly half an hour shorter than its predecessor, remains a taut little thriller that certainly doesn't outstay its welcome. Megan? Number seven, Megan. If you've got to make a morality tale about the addictive nature of technology with a sentient AI doll going on a rampage, this hybrid of Child's Play and The Terminator shows us how it's done. The good folks at Blumhouse took another potentially tired premise and weaved an enjoyable little horror flick that never takes itself too seriously, but still delivers a thought-provoking message. When her parents are killed in a car accident, nine-year-old Katie winds up living with her aunt Gemma, who just happens to be a talented toy designer working on the titular Megan. Gemma allows her niece to bond with a prototype of Megan, an android who becomes overly protective of Katie regarding anything that may cause her harm as a potential threat. And we've all seen how that can end up. The film's themes are worn so openly on its sleeve that it is an injustice to call its message subtext, as Katie becomes dependent on her new AI companion, and vice versa. Megan was realised using a clever combination of puppetry, some CGI, and young actress Amy Donald to handle some of Megan's more complex moves. While some may only remember this film for the now iconic Megan Dance, which went on to become a viral phenomenon, the film itself is executed with heart, a relevant message, and a wicked sense of humour. This is Katie. And who's this? Your sister? Oh, Jesus Christ! Hmm... Don't do the Megan Dance. Ow. Good evening. Number 6. The Menu while not technically a horror film, The Menu is more of a darkly comedic satire sprinkled with social commentary, supported by some stunning cinematography and an ensemble cast. A young couple arrives at a remote island with a selection of wealthy and equally intolerable elitists to dine at an exclusive restaurant which is strictly invitation only. They're soon met by the eccentric head chef Julian Slowick, a self-proclaimed food artist who promises his attendees a menu they will not soon forget. The premise itself is much like you'd find in an Agatha Christie tale, in which the privileged patrons realise that a night at this gourmet restaurant comes at a very high price indeed. The central performances from Anya Taylor-Joy and Ray Fiennes are notable standouts. However, Hong Chow puts in a truly memorable and suitably creepy performance as the maitre d' Elsa. The menu is an inventive black comedy with much to say about classism and the alleged pretentiousness of fine dining, delivering a delicious horror comedy that may well have you going back for seconds. Thank you for dining with us tonight. Now say... Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> Number five, Talk to Me. While not technically released until 2023, this genuinely terrifying and riveting Aussie horror film debuted at the Adelaide Film Festival in 2022 and hence sneaks its way onto this list. Haunted by the accidental overdose of her mother, Mia finds a degree of escapism when she joins a group of thrill-seekers who film themselves communicating with the spirit world. 
Mia quickly becomes obsessed with the practice until things go tragically wrong, unleashing a supernatural force that soon has her questioning her sense of reality. Newcomer Sophie Wilde delivers a compelling central performance as Mia, the isolated teenager who's yearning to belong makes her an ideal target for such an addictive practice. Directors Danny and Michael Filippo, whose YouTube channel Racka Racka has clocked up some 6.5 million subscribers, hintity hint hint, seem to be the ideal pair to produce a horror film that also throws in some interesting subtext about the addictive nature of social media. Hitting the ground running with their directorial debut, the pair offer up a tightly paced horror film that defies expectations with its clever premise and unforgettable conclusion. I let you in. Number 4. Watcher While other 2022 horror films such as Fresh and Men were fairly blunt about their message, Watcher is a little more restrained with its subtext in this truly unnerving thriller. When her husband receives a promotion, Julia moves with him to Bucharest and starts noticing a stranger watching her, becoming increasingly fearful when she learns that a serial killer is also at large. Julia struggles to convince her husband of the potential danger and ultimately seems to dismiss her concerns, attributing them to being a foreigner in an unfamiliar environment. At 90 minutes, Watcher remains a slow burn, but director Chloe Acuno handles it gracefully, presenting a tense thriller that explores female intuition and vulnerability. Michael Monroe, who of course became a fan favourite for her role in the excellent It Follows, offers a sympathetic performance as a fearful young woman desperate to be taken seriously. Watcher is a film that builds tension to anxiety-inducing levels by placing the audience squarely in the shoes of its protagonist, exploring themes of alienation and paranoia that remain deeply relevant. Number 3. Nope Jordan Peele strikes again with another high-tension horror drama, this time reaching for the skies with his crack at an alien monster movie. Grieving the recent death of their father, horse wranglers OJ and Emerald attempt to photograph a mysterious UFO, hoping they can sell the evidence to support their ranch. Meanwhile, the host of a nearby western theme park who suffered a traumatic experience as a former child star also tries to profit from the discovery. Immersing his films in rich social commentary, Jordan Peele explores themes of exploitation and the often turbulent relationship between humans and the natural world. Peele might not quite match the tension of his debut Get Out, but this film is an ambitious sci-fi adventure that looks incredible, inspired by such films as Jurassic Park and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. With memorable and often amusing characters, some genuine tension and stunning cinematography, Nope is a film that had many audiences responding with a resounding Yes! Yeah? I'm sorry, who are you? Number 2. Barbarian Barbarian was marketed on a simple premise that wasn't entirely fresh, but certainly intriguing. One thing's for sure, the less you know about this film going in, the better. So this entry will be brief. When a young woman, Tess, arrives to check into an Airbnb, she finds it's been double booked by Pennywise the Clown. <laughs> I'm so sorry. A seemingly pleasant young man named Keith, played by Bill Skarsgård. Seemingly out of options, Tess reluctantly accepts Keith's offer to lodge with him, which begins a series of unexpected events that explore themes of trust, instinct, and gender dynamics. Barbarian is an unpredictable horror film with some jaw-dropping left turns, so my advice would be, once you've seen it, show it to a friend and relive all the surprises through their eyes. Ah, uh, hey. And since 2022 was simply filled with quality horror films, here are a few Honourable Mentions. What do you want? I told you, I want to play a game. Stab movie trivia, three rounds. You call the cops, she dies. You get a question wrong, she dies. Where is Greg? Where is he? What? Where is Greg? I... 
he said he was going to bed, so my guess would be that he's sleeping. Okay, don't you think it's a little bit strange that he hasn't, like, woken up yet? Number 1. X and Pearl Consider this high praise, yet despite their distinct differences, the first two entries in Ty West's X trilogy complement each other so well, they both deserve top spot on this list. There will be some spoilers for the film X in this entry, so just a little bit of a heads up. While I won't offer comment on the latest film Maxine, being such a recent release, both X and Pearl are loving homages to the slasher subgenre while also exploring some fairly taboo themes. Set in the late 1970s, X tells the story of Maxine, an adult film star who arrives with her crew to a rented farmhouse to secretly film their latest masterpiece. However, things turn deadly when their elderly landlords wise up to their activities, in particular Pearl, who, lamenting her lost youth, becomes drawn to Maxine and the vitality she seemingly takes for granted. X is a modern take on what is referred to as the psycho biddy subgenre, seen in such films as Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, in which older women are often portrayed as antagonistic and driven by bitterness and jealousy. X is, above all, a love letter to the slasher films of the 1970s and 80s, with inspiration taken from several films including The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and other grindhouse films from that era. Meanwhile, the prequel Pearl tells a very different tale of X's antagonist as a young woman in the early 1900s, living an impoverished life on a farm while her husband is off at war. Pearl yearns to become a star, yet is forced by her domineering mother to help care for her invalid father, yet she soon becomes increasingly rebellious and her actions exceedingly violent. In contrast to the muted grunge aesthetic of X, Pearl is shot with a vibrant, almost technicolour palette, reminiscent of a musical, reflecting the romanticised hope that Pearl naively holds onto. Mia Goth steps into both roles, portraying the elderly version of Pearl under heavy prosthetics, delivering performances with such over-the-top gusto, earning her several accolades that year. The films may not be for everyone, and they are both vastly different experiences, yet their exploration of ambition, delusion and complex relationships do make for a rewarding experience, and not just another goddamn fucked up horror bitch. Thanks so much for watching this video everyone. I know there are heaps of excellent horror films from 2022. These were just my picks, but feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what your favourite horror film of that year was. This may be a list I revisit one day, since there are still several films of 2022 I haven't actually had the chance to see yet, like Prey and Skinnamarink and Crimes of the Future. And you call yourself a horror fan. Oh, would you go away? I will be back soon with a new video, but until then, be good to yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time.